What is up, Renaissance crew? I'm the original Renaissance man, Devon Da Vinci, and you're watching Da Vinci Reacts. Now, of course, that tag is just temporary. I will be changing the original Renaissance man line to something else. I'll probably keep Renaissance man, but I'll probably change the word original because it confuses too many people for some reason. And I'll probably end up debuting it sometime next week, so be sure to be on the lookout for that. Also, I already told you guys my afro was temporary, so when I do get it changed, I will be holding funeral proceedings for my afro, Aphrodite, and I will be debuting the look and the name of my new hairstyle uh, when I get it. So be sure to follow me on Twitter if you want to get a first look at that <laughs> and your first impressions of it. Anyway, uh, this video was requested by Jackie Ferguson on Twitter. You can find them at... Uh, V Nurse Jackie, which is V N U R S E J A C Q. So V Nurse Jackie. And they wanted me to react to Tim Munchen, Americans and Evolution. So you guys already know I've reacted to a few Tim Munchen videos. I really like him so far. Um, from what I've heard, uh, he came before Bo Burnham. Bo Burnham kind of uh, was inspired by his style and. Um, Kind of does a uh, similar style to him. Uh, I heard people say that they personally think that Tim Mention is a better musician than Bill, uh, Bo Burnham, which I can see. I mean, the dude was like orchestrating or was, um, what the hell is it called? Maestroing orchestras. So, I mean, the guy obviously has some pretty goddamn big musical talent. And I don't know. I, 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 I kind of like the name of this, Americans in Evolution. It might lead to some type of big conversation, which is good because this video is only 2 minutes and 30 seconds, so maybe it needs a big conversation sometime during this. Let's go ahead and check this out and see what it has to offer. When I, when, when I was in America the last, I read a, a survey, an analysis actually, a meta-analysis of many surveys done over a 15-year period about American beliefs. And um, turns out... He always reminds me of Beetlejuice. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, 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 fuck, him, yeah, fuck the man, yeah. <laughs> this, this survey of American beliefs um, showed that Americans, at a rate of, of, of between 48 and, and 51%, um, don't believe in evolution, um, which is like half. If that number is true, that makes me very sad because I do understand that America is the leading country when it comes to belief in like angels and stuff like that, which is already kind of, you know, weird. But I mean, yeah, you know, I was about to say we voted for Trump. So, there you go. And on top of that 50 odd percent, a further 38 to 40 percent of Americans believe that biological evolution has occurred, but believe that it was initiated by and has since been kind of administered by um, God. God. <laughs> Leaving a very small percentage of Americans who are right. <laughs> It's not my theory. Uh, but uh, I, I've done material about evolution before, and, and in Australia and in, in Britain, it, it barely raises an eyebrow. It's just worth a chuckle. But in America, it's quite contentious to do comedy about evolution, you know? It gets a gasp. It's, 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 it's the equivalent of doing material about fisting anywhere else. You know? it's, <laughs> it's quite confronting for them. I, I've been heckled by a man in the front row in New York loudly defending his, his disbelief in evolution. I've been pulled aside in foyers by people defending their disbelief in evolution in the same terms interestingly enough it's the same same defense that the intelligent design movement uses in the high courts of american states to try and sneak at pseudoscience yeah. into american high schools yeah. and yes that defense i will go back in a second um yes that is true uh they know that the creationist theory has been completely debunked and destroyed so what they did was they tried to come up with a new uh argument called intelligent design and they're, they're trying to use that to you know, make some type of attempt to get into school textbooks. And 
it's to me it's bullshit. Like if if it if you're doing the exact same argument that you were doing before, but you're just changing the name of it and reintroducing it, then isn't that like dishonest? Like you know that it's bullshit. You're just at this point you're just trying to get it in there, just to try to get it in there. Like you know it's wrong. All you did was change the name of it. It's like, damn, I was about to say like it's like when a Catholic priest does something crazy in a church and they just read it just re uh like reestablish him in another church somewhere um as if that's gonna somehow make him a different person when he gets to that new church this is always there, I'm sorry. but evolution is only a theory which, which is true. I mean, it is a theory, and it's good that they say that. I think it gives you hope, doesn't it? That, 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 that maybe they feel the same way about the theory of gravity. <laughs> and they might just float the fuck away. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to see if I can, uh, while this video is going on, I'm going to try to see if I can look up like if there's an extended version of that. But um, yeah, the problem with um, a lot of us Americans and the whole theory of like, well, scientific theories in general is they don't understand that a scientific theory is actually different from a normal theory. Like they truly believe that like the, the the gravity a theory of gravity is the same as like ah i have a theory that if i go here this will happen like it it's different i mean uh, people they people just need to like go and like look into it more and then maybe they'll get more into it all right i see a little bit of an extended clip right here so i'm going to go ahead and see if i can get it where i left off at all right so everybody go ahead and start it right here Further, 38 to 40 percent of Americans believe that biological evolution has occurred, but believe that it was initiated by and has since been kind of material about evolution before. And, and in Australia and in, in Britain, it, it barely raises an eyebrow. It's just worth a chuckle. But in America, it's quite contentious to do comedy about evolution. You know, evolution. I've been pulled aside in foyers by people that, that maybe they feel the same way about the theory of gravity. Okay, so I'll continue it from here. This isn't the video you wanted me to react to. You only got me the fuck uh, away. You only asked me to react to the two minute and thirty second one. So I'm giving you a bit of a handout with this one. So However, I think I think uh, I think I think when you lose religion from a society, especially religious ritual, you you can easily throw the throw the baby out with the uh, ecclesiastical bathwater uh, in in that there's some things I think I, I regret that we've lost and, and one of those things is the opportunity for groups of people to come together and share a sense of common purpose, of common belief. And that is in, what the Renaissance song. crew is all about. In, in music, you know, I think it's a wonderful feeling, that feeling of oneness that you get from, from sharing beliefs in, in music. So I've been doing a bit of an experiment on, on this tour to see if I can't generate a similar feeling in the, these secular buildings. Um, That's what the Renaissance crew is all about, having discussions. You don't have to like my opinion. You don't even have to respect my opinion. As long as you respect my ability to have an opinion, I will do the same for you. Like I, like I don't like a lot of stuff that some conservatives say. Hell, some things I don't even respect. I don't even like, but they do have a right to say it, and I respect the right for them to say it. Um, and hopefully, other people have that same respect. It's like nowadays, people they feel like a person with a different opinion is an actual enemy, <laughs> and it's like, oh no, you're you're a liberal, so screw you and everything about you, or oh, you're a conservative, so screw you and everything about you, and it's like, no, they have different opinions. That's the bottom line. So I was wondering if you'd be up, up for a sing. <laughs> I love 
This was like one of those uh, music concerts that they would have tried to show me when I was like two years old. Remember the early 90s they had people like this? <laughs> I love Jesus. Yeah, I do. You love, I love, do you love Jesus? Yeah, I hate faggots. Who do you hate? I, you hate dirty fucking faggots. Yeah, you hate them. I love Jesus. What happened? I just lost you there. It was all going, it was all going. Um. <laughs> it's hard to know where to pick it up. Um, <laughs> uh, maybe these are ideas best shared in churches. <laughs> That went reasonably quite well. <laughs> it's gone a lot worse. <laughs> it's always a bit of a worry. You know, it's, it's uh, quite hard coming up with song ideas, you know, because sometimes you think of an idea for a song and, 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 and it's really great, you know. It seems like a great idea just sitting at home singing along with your wife and kids and stuff, but... <laughs> it's just hard to know where it's necessarily going to translate into the theatre environment. You know? <laughs> No, I've always, I've always been a bit nervous about a song, um, and the reason I put that rather didactic punchline on the end there is because when I first tried it out, I was in a little club in North London, and I, just, I was just doing 15 minutes of, of, uh, of new material. And I did my set, and it went fine, and, and after the set, I was having a drink, and a, a gay guy came up to me. I, I knew him vaguely. At the, at the time, he was briefly the b boyfriend of a mate of mine. And he was like, hi, Tim. I said, hi, Luke, how are you doing? He said, yeah, really good. Um, how do you like gig? Yeah, great, yeah, I've got an idea for you. Great, okay. Um, he said, he said, I said, what, what? And he said, well, I just had an idea, you know, I had an idea, take it or leave it. I just thought with that Jesus faggot song, it's really funny, but what about if halfway through the song, you've got everyone singing along, I love Jesus, I hate faggots, and then, and then halfway through you just switch it. So they're singing, I hate Jesus, I love faggots. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, fuck. <laughs> Fucking homos, they just don't get irony. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, that's funny yeah Tim Munchen uh, is very funny when he because uh, he has this style where he like has an initial message but then he flips it on you or he has a message but you think like he lets you, he, he kind of like throws hints at what his message is and it makes you think one thing but then he flips it and makes it like the opposite and like he always does it and it always it's always funny to me um yeah, what was I about to say? Oh yeah, um, y'all have already heard me talk at an absolute crazy amount of times about like religion and things like that, and I'm going to do it again. So the whole Jesus thing and like gay people and stuff like that, like it's like there there's this people don't understand what like true Christianity is anymore. It's like they, the people that are Christians now, or the people that I call them the New Testament, uh, the two, they're the New Testament uh, Christians. Like they don't believe in the Old Testament; they believe in the New Testament. They think the Old Testament is somehow void now, and that only the New Testament matters, except when it comes to like the Ten Commandments and stuff. So, so pretty much what they're doing is they're, they're cherry picking the parts that they like and getting rid of the parts that make Christianity look bad. But the thing is, the Bible says that no parts of the Bible changes. <laughs> I don't know the exact phrasing of it. It slipped my mind out. I haven't read it in a minute, but you guys, I'm sure you can find the uh, chapter and verse and give the entire 
like lying, but Jesus himself says something about uh, neither a tide or a tittle of God's word changes or something like that, you know. So what it means is what God said yesterday is the same as it is today is the same as it is tomorrow. And when God says that a man who lays with another man is abom an abomination and should be killed, that is the same thing he meant today and it's the same thing he's going to mean in the future. When God laid out the rules for slavery, it's the same that it meant means today and the same that it means in the future. When God says that if you have an unruly child, you're supposed to take them to the edge of town and stone them, that's the same as it meant today is the same as it meant tomorrow. And that goes with a bunch of other of his rules, eating shellfish, uh, cutting your beard, getting a tattoo, wearing jewelry, uh, mixing milk and meat, uh, wearing uh, mixed fabrics like polyester, all that stuff is the same as it was is today is the same as it was or it's going to be tomorrow and the funny thing is the people that are the most extreme with their christianity like you see people like the westboro baptist Ch or the westboro church or whatever they're the closest to actual christians than a lot of you know basic americans the more basic americans it's like they have their own personal version of christianity so like for example with me when i first started like asking questions about when i was a christian i started to cherry pick stuff out of the bible so it was like well god you know if he's supposed to be a for all loving and all forgiving god there's no way he's going to throw you in hell forever that doesn't make sense so what i did was i wrapped around my head what made sense like, okay well i'm guessing maybe hell isn't forever maybe maybe hell is like jail maybe it's something that you're there for a temporary amount of time and then you know after a while he lets you out uh maybe god doesn't just automatically send uh people that don't believe in him into hell maybe it's maybe it's just good people maybe if you're a good person even if you don't want to say even if you don't admit that God is the savior or Jesus is your savior maybe you can still get into heaven if you're a good person and may, like I came up with all these like special rules that were nowhere in the Bible and were never like mentioned in any way by God or anyone like seriously affiliated with God <laughs> so where the hell did it come from it was just me trying to you know rationalize this idea that was wrong and I didn't want to admit it was wrong, so because if you admit it's wrong, it's like earth shattering. It's something that completely shakes your belief foundation. So your mind comes up with these like safety blocks to, you know, make it make sense to you while still giving you uh, a cop out to believe in it. But if you read the like if if you read the Bible in its entirety and like actually read it, don't just like read it and then try to wrap your head around okay well how do i how could i make this sound like a good thing just just read it and then ask yourself if anyone else wrote it if it was in any other book whether it was a fictional book or if it was in a different religious book like the quran or the torah or anything like that would i still think that it's a good thing so when god starts talking about slavery and stuff a lot of christians will sit there and be like oh well that was for that time and he was coming up with rules to help the people at that time understand it and this that and the other to ask yourself if that was written in anything else if the quran said anything about like rules of how to keep slaves and uh you're supposed to take them from the heathens around you and you, uh, Hebrew slaves you can keep for seven years and other slaves you can keep forever and all this other stuff. Would it make sense to you if it was written in those books? Like, would you sit, still sit there and go, huh, well, you know, I'm guessing, you know, if it, if it happened at that time, then, you know, maybe, uh, like, you're, you're coming up with rules and giving it exceptions when you wouldn't do the same for anything else, like anything else. Anyway, that's been my reaction to this. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. I do like talking religion because, um, well, it's it's kind of like, I don't want to sound arrogant or anything like that, but usually when you talk about religion, it's kind of like an argument that you already kind of know you're right in. Like, it feels like you win on a technicality, but the other person just doesn't realize it yet. Because truthfully, like I said, there's no way that you can actually prove that a god doesn't exist and by god i mean the deist generalized version of god i'm not talking about a specialized version of god like 
the Abrahamic religions God or anything like that. The one, I'm not talking about ones that have like actual rules and criteria for them. I'm talking about just the bare minimum generic deist version of a God. There's no way to prove that it doesn't exist and there's no way to prove that it does exist. But when it comes to the like the religious forms of God, then yes, you can prove that those don't exist. And I, and it's like a lot of religious people don't realize that yet because they still like in their head they're coming up with like reason for why it exists and they'll use evidence that's not evidence but they don't see that it's not evidence like I've had people say to me like oh well just look around you look at how's a baby born how are trees made and like that's not proof of God <laughs> like even if we found out that that babies just formed <laughs> and there was no type of actual science behind it that still doesn't prove God that just proves that babies are formed some magical way. <laughs> now we just have to figure out how that works. Like, like I don't get it. Like, it's also like the same with like the Big Bang theory. Like, people say, "Oh, well, who do you think made the Big Bang, or something like that, or what do you think was before the Big Bang?" Um, even if the Big Bang turned out to not be how everything began, that's still not the. That still doesn't automatically default God. Like, pe they think people think that like there's th these two answers. It's like, okay, well, it's either like the Big Bang or God. Like, those are only two answers. No. There are billions of freaking answers. Like, we don't know. It could be anything. Like, the the whole argument about fairy uh, creating or universe creating fairies is just as valid <laughs> as a God creating it. It's just we don't have evidence for either of them. Like, there's so many different things that you can possibly put in there. And some of them might make more sense than others, but they're still just as valid as the God claim. So until we find out the actual answer, all you can really say is, I don't know. And that seems to be religion's main problem. They don't like to admit that they don't know the answer. Maybe it makes them feel uncomfortable to not like have security in knowing that like they know how something is done. The idea of the unknown is a little bit more scary than being able to say, okay, well, I know how that works. Um, Anyway, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and move on to something else. I'm the original Renaissance man, Devon Da Vinci. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching this video. And if you want to have a discussion, uh, be sure to go in the comment section. Uh, like I said, I'm open to, you know, conversation. I'm not somebody that's just going to, uh, I'm not somebody that's just going to turn down a, a opposing opinion. All I ask is that you're willing to accept facts and reality for just that. Like, I don't want to hear if I list a fact, you're trying to debate the fact. The fact is the fact. Like, you can sit here and talk all you want about, like, if we were talking politics, you can say all you want about, like, Obama or Trump. But, like, for example, the fact is Trump was inaugurated June 20th, 2017. Like, that's a fact. You're not debating that. <laughs> like, that's a fact. So if somebody presents a fact, that's it. There's no, oh, well... Uh, you're just looking at it the, no it's a fact accept it anyway um, I was about to give you another example but I think I proved my point at this point so I'm going to go ahead and move on to something else I'm the original renaissance man Devon Da Vinci signing out giving you the deuces also deuces <laughs>